Good evening, and welcome back to another episode of LaSalle TV News. We're excited to be back with another episode, and we can't wait to share all that's happening on and off campus. Stay tuned for all the latest updates and stories. And for all the latest updates beyond campus, we'll bring you more updates about a rare celestial event that happens every 80,000 years, the relocation of famous passenger liner, the SS United States, and a heartwarming story of a pilot adopting a kitten after Hurricanes Helene and Milton. All that and more right here on LaSalle TV News. Welcome to LaSalle TV News, where we bring you everything from 20th and only to Philadelphia and beyond. My name is Mike Adratus, and I'm excited to be back for another episode of LaSalle TV News as your co-host. It's exciting to report all the latest from LaSalle, Philly, and the world. I came to dive into these stories and updates we have lined up for you. And I'm Nathan Gray, your other co-host, and you're watching LTV News, LaSalle TV's go-to source for all things LaSalle, Philadelphia, and the world. We've got a lot to cover in the next half hour, so stick around for some fun, interesting stories you won't want to miss. Let's jump right in. LaSalle University's nonprofit center has taken over the programming of the 43-year-old Arts and Business Council, previously hosted by the Chamber of Commerce of Greater Philadelphia. This move will see LaSalle hosting the popular Business on Board program, which trains professionals for nonprofit board service and introducing a new inclusive onboarding workshop focused on promoting equality in 2025. Both initiatives aim to strengthen leadership in the region's arts and culture nonprofits. LaSalle's president, Daniel Allen, called the partnership a wonderful expansion of the Nonprofit Center's mission, which is dedicated to supporting nonprofits and fostering sustainable, just communities. The Chamber of Commerce praised the transition, with CEO Shelley Cameron highlighting the vital role arts play in Philadelphia's vibrant economy. The Nonprofit Center, founded in 1981, continues, to com continues its commitment to help nonprofit across the country but remains particularly focused on supporting the greater Philadelphia region. Nonprofit Center Executive Director Kara Wentworth expressed exciting excitement about building on the success of the Arts and Business Council's programming. Now, will South TV News reporter Colby Samuels and Makai Marcano will take you on a journey We'll take you on a journey through LaSalle's Art Museum, highlighting the masterpieces and rich history that make it a cultural gem on campus. Take a look at the art collections that inspire and engage the LaSalle community. The LaSalle University Art Museum is a hidden gem on the school's campus. Many know it exists, but if you have to visit this showcase of artistry, so what does the museum have to offer? This collection of about 6,000 pieces has art from pretty much every major movement and minor movement going. We have everything from pre-Columbian art from all over the world, uh, from Africa, from Asia, from um, Latin America, the Caribbean. Art Museum was founded in 1976 down here in the lower level of Payment Hall by Brother Daniel Burke, who was a professor and the former president of the university. He believed he needed a study collection for the students, and we continue to be a resource for students, both in the art history major and um, other students on campus. Come here, pick a gallery, sit in front of a work of art, and just let your mind roll uh, and move into another dim dimension. And then after 10, 15 minutes, uh, get back to real life. So it's kind of a nice escape that doesn't do any kind of harm to your body, doesn't cost anything. The art museum can be found in the lower level of Payment Hall. It is open Monday through Thursdays from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. LaSalle University students Issa Jallo and Kashish Patel, both class of 2025, recently fulfilled their dream of studying abroad in London. The best friends and roommates who shared an apartment in Philadelphia embarked on the journey for different reasons but gained valuable academic and professional experience during their time overseas. Jalo, a marketing and international business major, chose London for its family ties and academic opportunities. Securing an internship with SAE Media Group, Patel, a finance and international business major, was drawn to London's status as a global finance hub. Gaining hands-on experience in mergers and acquisitions, 
both students embrace the city's culture, transportation system, and their international community of housemates. Their advice to further future study abroad students plan plan thoroughly immerse yourself in the culture and cherish the personal and professional growth that comes with the experience well San university and de la salle medical and health sciences institute have signed an international memorandum of understanding to strengthen their communication sciences disorder programs the agreement celebrated with a visiting delegation from the philippines focuses on faculty exchanges professional development for students and collaborative medical and health research. LaSalle President Daniel J. Allen expressed pride in expanding the university's global LaSallean network. The Institute's president, Antonio Ramos, emphasized the significance of this partnership, noting that it will enhance educational offerings and foster institutional growth beyond physical infrastructure. The move marks the beginning of a shared commitment to advancing health professions, educating through academic exchanges and joint research initiatives. Both institutions look forward to the potential for expanding career opportunities and deeper collaborations in the field of nursing, rehabilitation, and communication sciences disorders. LaSalle University's nonprofit center has awarded a $10,000 research grant to support a community-driven mental health project for black and brown youth. The grant, part of the 2024 Community Driven Research Day, will fund the development of a gamified version of the that could be me educate edu you creation platform to enhance youth coping skills the project aligns with the with lasalle's commitment to community university partnerships addressing social challenges the nonprofit center's executive director Cara wentworth emphasized that the grant supports underrepresented voices and aims to drive impactful community focused research the project team, led by Yang Wang from LaSalle's Computer Science Department and Derek S. Tarver, CEO of That Could Be Me Foundation, will work with LaSalle students and collaborators to empower youth through digital creation. Self-care techniques and peer support, this initiative reflects LaSalle's dedication to addressing social determinants of health and building sustainable community impact. Next, LTV News reporters Aiden Brandt and Jack Wagner guide you through the heart of campus ministry, support, and service at LaSalle University. Find out how these programs foster community, faith, and meaningful impacts on and off campus. <laughs> So ministry is really about helping students figure out the big questions in life. Who am I? Whose am I? And based on the answer to those two questions, how am I going to be in the world? For some people, that's through an organized religion. For other people, it's through a spirituality they develop. But for some people, they figure that out through the service side. I want to do something. I want to be of help. I know I'm responsible for the way other people live, the way other people are treated. So that ends up on the, on the service side. One of the ways they sort of get in touch with the other side, you know, who they are, is through service and through helping people. And you, doing it once a week. We really try to do a lot more small events that are weekly, where students actually get to know people. And because they get to know people and go to these sites weekly, and on a first name base with some of the people they're working with. It's just really cool being able to go out into the community, get to know different people, get to help different people. Yeah, right, 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 right. What we try to really stress is, you know, someone's hungry today, you have to feed them. But what are you doing to make sure they're not hungry tomorrow? A rare comet visible only once every 80,000 years is offering a spectacular celestial show this month, lighting up the skies over Philadelphia. If you're hoping to catch a glimpse, some prime viewing spots in the city include the Mann Center, Sear Green, Lemon Hill Park, and the Belmont Plateau. For those willing to travel, Cherry Springs State Park in Pennsylvania, known for its dark skies, is a top choice for spotting hard-to-see astronomical phenomena. If you'd like to enjoy the events with other enthusiasts, Rowan University in Glassboro, New Jersey, 
is, hoping, is hosting a sky watch party on Thursday from their observation deck. The event will feature telescopes and binoculars, making for an even better viewing experience. You may also catch a rare double sighting, as a supermoon will also accompany the comet. Ast astronomy experts recommend looking west after sunset for the best view, particularly on a clear night. Through the comet as visible to the naked eye, binoculars can enhance the experience. Early viewing is recommended, as, it, as brightness will start to fade by the end of the month. The Philadelphia Museum of Art is set to host a thrilling murder mystery event on November 16th, where groups of four to six people will attempt to solve the mock killing of a curator. The fictional crime, centered around the curator's knowledge of an upcoming painting sale, challenges participants to identify the culprit from four suspects. Clues will be hidden in paintings, artifacts, and even the curator's appointment calendar. The event, Murder at the Art Museum Scavenger Hunt, is organized by Watson Adventures, a company known for hosting interactive mystery hunts at museums across the country. This particular mystery, considered one of their more difficult challenges, is designed for adults, but can also be fun for teens working alongside their parents. For $19, attendees can enjoy the game while exploring the museum in a fresh and exciting way. Rachel Duncan, director of public hunts at Watson Adventures, says the event offers a unique perspective on the museum's collection, inviting participants to discover the art in a new light while supporting the arts. A donation box meant for the Food Bank of Delaware was stolen from Kerspel's pumpkin patch in Dover this past Saturday, disrupting a beloved community tradition created by Amanda Kerspel. The patch is a local Halloween attraction featuring hand-carved pumpkins of popular characters and icons. Each year, visitors enjoy the illuminated display while contributing donations to help families in need. Two donation boxes were set up for the food bank, but one was stolen, along with the money inside. Although the amount is unknown, the thief clipped the box from the ground. This is the second year a donation box has been taken, leaving Kerspel disappointed. Chad Robinson from the food bank emphasized the importance of donations, especially during the holiday season. As they, help to, as they help provide essential food items to those in need. He noted that the thefts like this impact the ability to ensure everyone can enjoy holiday meals with loved ones. We're going to take a quick break, but stay tuned for more stories from LaSalle, Philly, and beyond. Everyone has a community, a neighborhood, school, kids' teams, where you worship, work, work out, or any other place or group where you choose to belong. Communities can provide support when you need it, and even when you don't know you do. Like when it comes to preventing underage drinking and other substance use, community members can be your eyes and ears when you're not with your kids and alert you to signs of potential problems. Welcome back to LTV News. St. Kevin's School in Springfield is stepping in to help St. Francis of Assisi School after a fire on October 7th destroyed the building housing the lower grades. The fire has led to canceled classes for the 150 affected students, but St. Kevin has offered nine classrooms to accommodate them. Some of these classrooms haven't been used in years, so extensive cleaning, organizing, and preparation are underway. Even young students like our like our pitching it into the student classrooms looked nice. The lower grade students started at St. Kevin last week, while upper grade students have already returned to their building, which wasn't affected by the fire. In the coming months, St. Francis hopes to have modular classrooms placed on their campus to reunite the school. The community support has been overwhelming, with donations flooding in, ranging from pencils to projectors and protractors, Amy Travers, a preschool teacher at St. Francis, expressed gratitude for the outpouring of support and is eager to see her students back in class. She said the upcoming school day will feel like the first day of school, filled with excitement and hope. 
The staff and community are working hard to restore normalcy after this challenging time. A SEPTA regional rail train was halted and evacuated in Philadelphia on Thursday morning after passengers noticed smoke and smelled burning. The train, which had 75 passengers on board, stopped at the Ivy Ridge station in the Roxborough section of the city. Video captured by a passenger showed smoke coming from beneath one of the train cars. The incident prompted an immediate response and passengers were safely evacuated from the train. A SEPTA spokesperson later confirmed that a mechanical issue was the cause of the smoke. Fortunately, the situation was resolved within an hour and shuttle buses were provided to transport passengers to their destinations. The incident caused some disruption, but no injuries were reported and normal service resumed shortly after. A man wanted for a hit and run that injured three nurses and a gunshot victim outside Penn Presbyterian Medical Center has turned himself in to the authorities. Jadir Goodwin, age 20, surrendered to Philadelphia police at their headquarters on Wednesday. The incident occurred Saturday when a silver Jeep Cherokee, driven by Goodwin, struck the nurses and the gunshot victim in the hospital's emergency room area. This alarming event shocked the city as, and raised concerns for the safety of healthcare workers. Goodwin faces multiple charges including aggravated assault, fleeing police, and careless driving, as filed by the Philadelphia District Attorney's Office. Early Saturday morning, Goodwin and two other men arrived at the emergency room with a 28-year-old gunshot victim. After requesting assistance, they alleged fled the, their, in their vehicle, recklessly speeding away and hitting the nurses and the victim. Philadelphia Mayor Cheryl Parker condemned the incident as totally and completely unacceptable, pledging to combat the city's ongoing culture of lawlessness. Philadelphia Police Commissioner Kevin Bethel expressed disbelief at the, the audacity of the act, emphasizing the cri critical role nurses play in the community. As Hispanic Heritage Month draws to a close, Cafe Tinto, a family-owned Colombian bakery in North Philadelphia, celebrates its roots and culture within the community. Located on Wyoming Avenue, the bakery offers a vibrant atmosphere filled with live plants, traditional Colombian music, and authentic food. Giselle Poveda, the kitchen manager, explains that the bakery aims to transport visitors to Cartagena, Colombia, through its ambiance and dishes. The heart of Cafe Tinto is the kitchen, where family recipes are passed down through generations. The bakery is known for its empanadas, freshly baked bread, and pan de bono, a traditional Colombian cheese bread made with tapioca flour and white cheese. Another highlight is their 100% organic Colombian coffee, a product of relationships with coffee growers back home. Cafe Tinto's authentic flavors have drawn a loyal following. Local customer Eli Washington praises their coffee, while Jorge Lopez, originally from Nicaragua, finds comfort in the food's connection to his heritage. For Poveda, sharing her culture with the North Philadelphia community is a source of immense pride. The first ever adaptive golf championship for disabled players teed off in Bucks County, Pennsylvania. Hosted by the Golf Association of Philadelphia at Okaway Golf Club, despite windy conditions, participants embraced the challenges of the game. Larry Solano, a veteran with a spinal injury, emphasized the goal of making his disability unnoticeable while playing. He described the event as a close-knit, happy family. The championship features 60 adaptive players from 21 states and five countries, showcasing a range of disabilities, including neuromuscular conditions, cerebral palsy, amputees, and CETA players. Manager of the Adaptive Golf Association at the, of Philadelphia, Anna Kittleson, explained that the adaptive golf is about embracing all abilities and creating opportunities for people to participate. No matter their challenges, participants such as 82-year-old Judy Brush, who has a prosthetic leg, and Mike Tallman, a veteran of adaptive golf with a spinal injury, express the joy and camaraderie they experience through the sport. The 36-hole two-day event not only provides fun, but also offers physical and mental benefits for the players. The SS United States, once the fastest ocean liner to cross the Atlantic, is set to become the world's largest artificial reef of the coast of Destin, Fort Walton Beach, Florida. After decades moored in Philadelphia, this historic vessel will now serve as a marine habitat offering shelter to diverse species and enhancing the local ecosystem. Built in the 1950s as a troop transport, the ship was later transformed into a luxury liner, 
holding the transatlantic speed record. Now this commissioned, the SS United States will join 500 existing artificial reefs, providing an exciting destination for divers. The Okaloosa C County Board has approved the project, with the con with conversation costing up to $10 million. It includes plans for a museum dedicated to the ship's legacy. The move is expected to generate economic benefits, with artificial reefs bringing a 13,800% return on investment through job creation and tourism. This transformation honors the SS United States legacy and creates a new world natural wonder beneath the waves. We've got one more break, but we'll be right back with more LTV news after this. It's hard to always know what's going on with your kids. The Talk They Hear You mobile app and Screen for Success tool can help. The mobile app shows you how to turn everyday situations into opportunities to talk with your kids about alcohol and other drugs. Screen for Success helps you find out if your child needs more support by asking about their health, wellness, and well-being. Keep your kids safe and healthy. Download the free Talk They Hear You mobile app and start using Screen for Success today. Welcome back to LTV News. Former One Direction singer Liam Payne tragically died after falling from a hotel balcony in Argentina. The incident occurred at the Casa Sur Hotel in the Palmero neighborhood with police responding to reports of a quote, aggressive man possibly under the influence, end quote. Payne, 31, fell from the third floor suffering fatal injuries. Police confirmed Payne may have been intoxicated and investigations are ongoing. The hotel manager, in a call to emergency services, described the situation as a crisis involving drugs and alcohol. The singer, known for his time with the global boy band One Direction, had been open about his struggles with mental health and addiction. In interviews, Payne had discussed moments of suicidal ideation and his battle with substance abuse. He is survived by his seven-year-old son, Bear, and his family. Payne was in Buenos Aires for a concert by former bandmate Neil Horan. Fans and family have expressed shock and sorrow over the loss of the beloved star. Kenya's political landscape has been shaken by the swift impeachment of Deputy President Ragathi Gashagula. Just two years after his election with President William Ruto, Ruto acted quickly about concern, after concerns about Gashagula, undermining his leadership recalling his own fault with former president Uyura Kenyatta. Gashagui's attempt to consolidate power in the, in the Mount Kenya region, along with decisive rhetoric, led to his impeachment. While the process was ordered and legal, it sparked debates across the nation, especially in Mount Kenya, Gashagui's home region. Initially met with betrayal, the mood shifted as Kithur Kandiki, also from Mount Kenya, replaced him as a deputy president. The region's influence is crucial in Kenya's political and Gashagua's downfall highlights the importance of unity in the country's leadership. With the next election just three years away, political stability in Mount Kenya remains key to Ruto's presidency. Shailaja Paik, a historian and professor at the University of Cincinnati, has been awarded the prestigious MacArthur Genius Fellowship for her groundbreaking research on Dalit women, a marginalized group in India's caste system. Raised in the slums of Pune, Paik's early life was shaped by the hardships of poverty, limited access to basic resources, and caste discrimination. Despite these challenges, she excelled academically and pursued studies in history, eventually focusing on the double discrimination faced by Dali women. Her work has illuminated the complex intersections of caste, gender, and sexuality in India. Paik's research, including her books on Dali women, educate Dalit women's education and the social history of caste performance 
has contributed significantly to understanding the enduring impact of caste discrimination. The $800,000 fellowship will support her continued efforts to promote social justice and advocate for marginalized communities worldwide, reinforcing the global conversation on caste and inequality. A groundbreaking startup, Molg, is tackling the global electronic waste crisis with the help of precision robots designed to disassemble old devices and recover usable components. Founded by former tech entrepreneur Rob Lawson Shanks, the company has attracted major venture capital funding to enhance e-waste processing. Molg's robots, equipped with multiple arms and high-resolution cameras, carefully dismantle electronics in as little as five minutes. Unlike traditional recycling, these robots focus on reusing components, not just breaking them down. This process allows parts to be pre repurposed multiple times before reaching the recycling stage, greatly reducing waste. Partnering with companies like Dell, Molk has pioneered modular designs that, simply dis dis that simplify assembly. The robot's ability to disassemble devices such as servers and repurpose their parts for new units is re revolutionizing. How we think about e-waste and sustainability. This innovation offers a promising solution to the 60 million tons of e-waste generated annually worldwide. In a historic moment, SpaceX Starship rocket made headlines with its fifth successful test flight, landing on Earth using propulsion technology. This achievement marks a pivotal step in space exploration, as the Starship becomes the largest and heaviest reusable rocket to return to Earth intact. The launch held at SpaceX's Hawthorne, California headquarters saw the massive Starship booster descend from space, activate its thrusters, and land precisely next to the launch tower. This was a first for any rocket of its kind, and an impressive demonstration of SpaceX's engineering prowess. SpaceX aims to reduce launch costs, aligning with founder Elon Musk's vision of human exploration beyond Earth, including missions to Mars. With NASA's involvement in upcoming Artemis missions, this SpaceX success signals a new era for space travel, one that could eventually make interplanetary journeys more affordable and sustainable. As we wrap up today's episode, I want to thank you all for tuning in. It's been a great episode for me, and I'm excited for the next episode of LaSalle TV News. I can't wait to see what's next for this season has in store. For now, I'm Mike Geratis, signing off. Take care, and see you next time.